Welcome to the Voc Talk Cafe by Cool. This is a place where we discuss teaching a trade in today's world. Everything that you're going to see today and everything that we talk about is available on the website. So we have on the website the recordings, uh, the summary, and the, all the archives are available under each article. At the top right, we have the meeting agenda, the minutes, uh, and the attendance document. The meeting agenda and the minutes, everybody can collaborate in. So that's the link that's been shared with you in the chat, but you can access it here. We also have the calendar, so you can subscribe to the calendar just by clicking on the the plus next to the to the to the google and it will sync your work calendar well or the calendar you choose choose your work calendar it'll sync it to your calendar so you can see every monday what the topic is and then at the bottom of the page you have any um shared resources that that we might present so those of us that have that are hosting this as well as anybody in in the vox out cafe that presents some resources we make sure that we document them there um, so just a quick word before we start, this is a pilot project, um, so we really want to create a space for you. Any suggestions, any thoughts, any anything that you'd like to let us know, it's definitely worth uh, us listening to, so please reach out and, and let us know, okay? After that, so today, <clears throat> November 27th, in honor of the labor relations that we're all living right now in Quebec, we are talking with the administration and commerce sector, and we want to talk about how to teach workplace dynamics in this context of a labor dispute that we're going through. This is actually a series that we're doing with the different sectors, and so this week we're talking to administration and commerce. So our goals for today, we really want to situate this idea of a critical perspective of worker rights and expectations. So this is not about me giving my opinion on workers' rights or a teacher giving their opinion on workers' rights. It's about taking this critical perspective as to, well, what are workers' rights and what are worker expectations in my field and in relation to the structures that exist? We want to identify some government websites for support, and we want to discuss this in the context of preparing both local students and non-local students for a Canadian workforce. Right on, Leprechaun. Let's go ahead and get started. Or, as I learned, ça marche, Pontiac. On y va. Okay, so let's talk about how we prepare our students for these workplace dynamics, but in the context of a labor dispute, which is part of what we're all going through. So in this idea, um, I just want to point out that the, the Canadian History Museum actually has a great website. It's like circa 1999, so it's a very old school website. But still, they have this great website called Canadian Labor History. If you're kind of curious about reading about it, like from your perspective, and it really situates like where we started sort of at the, at the, at the at the birth of sort of colonialization of this country and then where we're at today. And it situates the difference between workers' rights. So, and this is where like labor law comes in and saying this is day and workforce expectations. And I'm kind of excited to discuss today's workforce because we're talking to um, uh, administration, administration and commerce. Uh, and this is interesting because this is a sector that's very divided. You have half the sector, or half, you have part of the sector that's unionized and part of the sector that isn't unionized. So this creates for interesting labor situations. But if we look at it from a historical perspective, up until the 1960s, the public sector was not unionized. And it was only post-World War II that we start to see unionization of public sector. Then in the 70s, we're looking at these this, this coming together of unions and having a set of strikes for for common um common issues and then in the strikes in the 80s and 90s were about job reorganization and tasks and the strikes we're looking at today are about uh quality of 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 life and work-life balance and 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 um indexing to uh um uh what do you call that uh not immigration indexing to uh um inflation okay and so when we look at just briefly, very quickly in Quebec, the work stoppages we've had, so the strikes we've had, like let's say since 
uh, the 60s when we have unionization of the public sector. And when we talk public sector in uh, secretarial accounting and computing support, these would be people that are working inside government systems. So inside the healthcare sector, inside public education, uh, inside the government itself, like these would be the unionized trades here. And in the beginning, where they were, there was it was really about setting standards for pay scales, vacation, and job security. And as we're going up through the years, it's changing into the, the, uh, access to pension plan and and percentages of your pe pension plan. Then there was in the early 1990s the job restructuring from that sort of last of the post-war boom that we had to now compensate for, and then wage cuts, and then. Now, where we're at is uh, access to retirement and manageable workloads, as well as index salary. So you can see there's these cycles that are happening. But each time there's a slightly different theme. It's not the same theme appearing each time, which makes you wonder, OK, does that get addressed and something and it kind of unbalances and pulls something else up that, that affects it in the future? And so when we go through here, the other thing that's interesting is that uh, unionization really affected women enormously, and especially in the post-war period with the unionization of the public sector, because the public sector tends to have a lot more women working in it than, than the private sector. Um, so, for example, manufacturing and then the construction trades, that unionization started much earlier, but because there aren't as many women working in those trades, we didn't see that presence as much. And since since uh, the public sector unionization, this is where we're starting to see a lot more women that are unionized, and we'll see some statistics later on. But not only are the women being unionized, but the women are also starting to uh, help run the unions. So they're the ones now at the at the leadership part of the unions. And when we look at the foreign born workforce, so, so Canada, our workforce is 22% foreign born. And when we look at Montreal's population, about 35% of sort of Montreal and area, 35% of the population is born outside of the province. It doesn't necessarily mean they're born outside of Canada, just outside of the province. And with that, a lot of people in the workforce in 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 Canada are overqualified for the job that they're in which is kind of like if it's interesting when you look at 22% of the foreign the workforce is foreign born and yet 16% of our workforce is overqualified for the position that they have we know this because in vocational training, we get a lot of people that are coming to us to get degrees and get training that they need and that diploma so they can enter into the workforce, even though they're coming in with diplomas from their own country. And there's a bit of a disconnect between getting their diploma recognized and the way that, that the job and the task is set up in this country. So, and then with that, <coughs> what's interesting for not i can't say it's specific to um the uh, administrative sector uh trades but when we look at unionization we look at the difference between public and private so non-commercial versus commercial workers 61 percent of non-commercial workers so public sector workers are unionized as opposed to 15 percent in the, in the commercial sector and women's unionized rates which is really interesting have stayed stable over 40 years so since we got to the point where we started uh unionizing public sector workers which included a huge swath of women it's been very stable over the last 40 to 50 years however men's rates have fallen by 10 percent so that's kind of an interesting statistic. Now, with all this, now that was a bunch of information and a bunch of statistics. And like, what does it mean? So we know that when we're teaching our students and preparing them for the workforce, we do talk about worker safety. And I mean, I realize that for um, the administrative trades, you're not you know, you're not dealing with the same safety issues that somebody in construction or let's say cooking is dealing with, but we are dealing with worker safety in that there's definite ergonomics comes into this, but then workers safety in the workplace uh, as far as uh, professionalization 
and ensuring um, that the workplace is, is uh, conducive and a happy place to work. Um, and this all falls under the realm of saying this is state. So we often teach that to our students and we explain saying this is state to them and, 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 you know, I'm making sure that you have ergonomically viable chairs. And so, you know, I, I know a lot of work has been done in the last 30 years dealing with computers and making sure that you're sitting properly and that, that, you know, you have, have, have proper support for your back and for your arms. And, you know, this is a lot of work's coming out of that, but then there's also a part of the workforce that I don't know if we're addressing. And if we are addressing, how are we addressing it? And that would be this idea of, of workforce expectations and workers' rights when it comes to both non-union positions and union positions. So for somebody coming from outside of the country, somebody not born in this country, or somebody moving between provinces, as well as our local students, do they understand the role of a union? And if they're going to be walking into a trade where a union is going to be present, do they can they differentiate between why they would go to a job with a union and why they would decide not to? Um, are we are we exploring this idea of the role of a union without really going into like your personal opinion on it? But why do unions exist and what do they do and what's their role? And and does the worker know if there's a problem on their paycheck where to go? Do they know that that do they call this in the state? Do you call your union rep or do you talk to HR? So especially for workers that are unsure of exactly how the Canadian workforce works, whether they're young workers or whether they're workers from abroad, situating this, this in context of what we're going through now, a labor dispute, where a lot of us are also experiencing like the, 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 we don't have access to our full salary. And why would, why would that be interesting? Because nobody wants to not have their full salary, but there might be a reason behind that. Are we exploring that idea? And so in this in this in this in in this little mini discussion here the key takeaways are that both foreign and local students need to be educated on workforce rights and expectations so not just on the the health and worker safety but on this workforce to be able to be a fulfilled worker in this and feel like they're contributing and not feel like they're being exploited and foreign born workers might benefit a little bit from this historical context of labor because they might be not not be familiar with where this labor has come from and where this movement has come from and why it's stronger in certain areas of the world than in others and this would better prepare them to make decisions in the workforce about their job so this is the end of the presentation. So at this point, we're going to stop the recording. So uh, every week I try to come up with a technological tool or a, a pedagogical approach that's tech related, because as a RISC consultant, that's my mandate to help you guys integrate technology in your in your lessons. And uh, what I came up, I, I think I came up with something that's pretty close to what we were discussing before uh, this week. Um, the suggestion, uh, Robin said show earlier, teach almost, you almost said teach. I don't want to do that. I want to <laughs> make suggestions so to create a collaborative scrapbook about an issue that needs to be uh, discussed. I think that implicating the students in, in the process of expressing the different ideas and making them look uh, go it's going to bring them deeper into the understanding we we talked a lot about how difficult it is to make them realize the reality of things so simple variation on a common pedagogical formula call it the debate a forum a panel a general assembly or you can tweak it to to match the context but you present conflicting points of view for example the when the point of view of the union the, the union the employer the conciliator that just been named by the government to try to resolve and the taxpayer maybe could be involved in this and then students make research and my my specific idea for this week is that instead of making them prepare a presentation or an oral thing, like they would research images that express their vision of what the concepts are, and they would put that in a collaborative document, being a, a padlet, a mind map, a whiteboard, a slideshow, or whatever, and then the presentation to the group is based on 
those images that everybody needs to be contributing about. It's not revolutionary, but it's a good uh, uh, format to uh, present different uh, conflict resolution approach, bring in some idea, uh, notion of copyright ownership of images as well, show them where to search and stuff like that. So that's my suggestion for the week. Yeah. And I'm going to put in the chat the links to the CVT uh, website and newsletter. If you guys need to get in touch with us, I'm going to say us because we're a team, but we're a team of two. James Byrne is in Sherbrooke. I'm talking to you guys from uh, Montreal, but we're here to help you if you need to request our services. Voila. Yeah, cool. Thanks. All right. We have an open mic. I mean, does anybody have any questions specifically they want to bring up that has nothing to do with labor relations? <laughs> any questions you might have? I do. I just noted a question from Marc. You said that okay. you are um, IT for RISI. Um, I was looking for a tool and I tried to look online and my CP suggested that I look on RISI, but I haven't had a chance to do it yet. So because you're here, I will do it like that. Is there any uh, platform that you know that allows us to create GIFs with like an avatar? Yes. Because okay. I would love that to create little GIFs with like an avatar of myself, like to send to the students sometimes with their examiners. I know it sounds baby, but sometimes the students really find it funny. Fun. So yeah. like an animated avatar of you where you would- Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Funny, yeah. I, I don't have a list to propose to you, but I, I'll, I'll do a quick search and, and get back to you. Thank you. Super. Okay, so to continue this discussion uh, on today's topic, you can go to the vt.proceed.ca website and you can continue the discussion in the discussion threads in your, in your trade group. And if you need a hand, remember there's the little chat button that goes straight to my phone that I will pay attention to from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Otherwise, it goes to my email. <laughs> After that, uh, we have our exit ticket. So if you want to just give us a little bit of feedback of what you thought about the Vok Talk Cafe, and it helps us make these a little bit more uh, oriented towards what you want in a Vok Talk Cafe. And of course, if you have an idea for a Vok Talk Cafe, let us know that as well. Uh, so we have our contact information there if you want to get a hold of us. There are the resources from the presentation. And you know what? I forgot to change the date. <laughs> Next Vok Talk Cafe will be next Monday, and we don't have our theme yet, so we will see.